Jim Andrino's here, stand-up classroom, brought to you by New Media Comedy Worldwide, and also brought to you by the Comedy Legacy Podcast, which you should be watching every week. We've got so many talented performers that have come through and talked to us about how to help you with your with your comedy endeavors. Um, this past week, we talked about so much in the stand-up classroom, but not everybody has Instagram, which is where we distribute these videos normally. Uh, so we're bringing it to you here on YouTube. And this is the weekly digest edition. So you get all the lessons in a row. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. We hope you learn a little something. Hey everybody, Jim Andrino's here with the Stand Up Classroom, brought to you by New Media Comedy Worldwide and the Comedy Legacy Podcast. Um, today we're gonna talk about writing visually. What do we mean by writing visually? Well, when you're doing stand up, you want the audience to be participatory in your show. You want them to be able to imagine the things you talk about. You don't just want them to react to your feeling. You want them to be able to put themselves in it as well. So when we start our writing, we want to put in the most visual components we can. Things that will, will just inspire their imagination so that they can imagine themselves in the things you're talking about. You want to talk about being cut off? Talk about it in the most descriptive way you can so they could feel they were in the car with you or in the driver's seat instead of you. You want the audience to always feel and not just listen. I also want to talk a little bit today about editing. Um, it's important that we understand that we are stronger as we keep doing this. And your editing chops were not the same when you started stand-up as they are right now. Go back, re-edit your old stuff, see what you can come up with. And I'm not talking about rewriting, I'm literally talking about re-editing your old stuff. Can you cut out words? Can you use a visual word to increase an emotion? Can you use pausing? Can, can you replace words with silences? The editing of your old material will make it stronger and breathe new life into it. Now, we do the stand-up classroom to help new young comics uh, learn as much as they can. We also have a great program that does that as well, the Comedy Legacy Podcast. And tonight, on uh, Monday, July 20th, we have Carol Montgomery, the producer of Funny Woman of a Certain Age and just a, a monster stand-up for over 30 years, who's coming on to talk about her process, talk about how she creates, and, and to talk about what she's done to keep herself relevant through a very long and very storied career. Tune in, watch it, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Stand Up Classroom. Hey everybody, uh, Jim Andrino's here. It is the Stand Up Classroom for Tuesday, July 21st. We are brought to you by folks at New Media Comedy Worldwide and the Comedy Legacy Podcast. Did you catch it last night? Carol was awesome. I hope you caught it. Um, we're gonna talk today about writing and specifically free association. Sometimes you have nothing. You have nothing in your head that you want to write about. You, you are bereft of ideas. And what I'm going to tell you is to just free associate. Put words on the page. Go where it takes you. Don't worry about being funny. Sometimes what we need to do is get into the practice of writing and not so much worry about the practice of being funny. The funny will come. Trust it. You're a funny human being. That's why you got into stand-up. But the discipline needs to be cultivated. And that's why free writing is so important. Sit down, give yourself a time limit and say, I'm gonna write about anything. I don't care where it takes me, but I'm gonna write for X amount of time. And when you do that often enough, you're gonna find that you're gonna free associate on some awesome things. Just allow your imagination to go through all the tangents it can go by. I also wanna to talk to you about your, your public and how you present yourselves to them. We all have websites, we all take headshots, and we all, you know, have social media, and then we abandon them for good chunks of time. Your headshots are gonna need to be redone far before you redo them. Your website is gonna need to be retooled long before you retool it. Uh, your social media will be active while you're passionate about it, and then inactive for a chunk of time. You need to stay on that. You need to go in, look at, at your, your public presentation of yourself and change things. 
fix the things you need to fix. Why do you want to fix the things you, you need to fix? Because if the public sees an old stale version of you, that's what they believe is still out there. And truly, aren't you a better performer now than you were six months ago? Update your stuff so they know that. Now, Comedy Legacy aired last night, and if you missed it, you can go back to YouTube right now and watch it again. Uh, we leave it there, and you can catch even the older episodes on YouTube as well. Or you can get them wherever you get your podcast. But do watch and get the information. Last night was Carol Montgomery, who is awesome. Uh, and while you're there, check out the even older episodes. So many people you could learn from. I'm Jim Andrinos. We'll see you next time in the Stanford Classroom. Hey, everybody. Jim Andrinos here. Stand-up Classroom. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these, and I hope you're learning as much as you can. And uh, we are brought to you by the Comedy Legacy Podcast. Go check that out. Uh, and also the fine folks at New Media Comedy Worldwide. They are worldwide. They, you can't stop them. Um, and we want to talk today about a, a couple of things. The first one I want to talk about is stagnancy of style. When you write and you get into a groove and you're there like, oh, this is how I write, or this is the style that I present on stage, it's very easy to fall into a rut. And it's very easy to get into a tendency where rhythmically you never surprise an audience. And you want to break those tendencies. You want to get out uh, of, of the cadences every once in a while. And the easiest way for you to do that is to take some dedicated writing times and go, okay, stylistically, I want to write in a different way. Stylistically, I'm going to move away from my pattern. Um, for me, I tell longer stories on stage. And every once in a while to break them up, I hit some shorter punchlines, some set, you know, set up and delivery and, and flat out one liners that I can pepper in between them or even pepper during the longer stories to give it a different rhythmic feel. In essence, you want the audience to never be able to predict where you're going to go. And it's up to us when we sit down to write, to play with our rhythms and to do more with our talent so the audience is always expecting funny but never knows how that funny is going to be delivered. Now, I also want to talk about performing because pandemic, there's not a tremendous amount of performing going on. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be in a state where it's opened up and you're performing, wow, I, I envy you guys. Um, I'm doing outdoor shows, I'm doing car shows, I'm doing Zoom shows, um, but it's not the same amount of time that I've been spending performing. So how do I make myself a better performer when I'm not getting the stage time that I should be getting? I want to start by saying transcribe a set. And, and I know that sounds crazy. Jim is not editing, you're gonna tell me to edit. No, I'm telling you to transcribe a set because it's gonna help you as a performer. And when I say transcribe it, I mean transcribe it. Every um, every er, every ah, uh, every, every time you use the wrong word in the sentence, Every time you mumble incoherently and, and you don't understand what the hell you just said, uh, every time the audience shouts something at you and you say a response, write it down, verbatim, word for word, and then look at it and see where your laziness um, or inattentiveness, let's go with inattentiveness because I don't think anybody's really lazy, uh, has stopped you from being a more fluid performer. Now, the transcription is difficult, and I like to do it with longer sets as opposed to shorter sets, because on a longer set, you fall into rhythms, and you'll fall into your bad habits. You want to find them, you want to hunt them. Now, um, you can get a lot more great advice uh, from the masters of this art form, which we interview every week on the Comedy Legacy podcast. Uh, and you don't just have to get it on YouTube. Maybe you drive a lot and you want it in your car. Maybe you want to listen to it, you know, as you're going to sleep or you want to play while you're in the shower. Wherever you get your podcasts, whether that be Apple or Spotify or anywhere else, go download them, subscribe, and listen to them at your leisure. You're going to learn a lot. I'm Jim Andrinos. We'll see you next time on the Stand Up Classroom. Welcome, my friends, to the Stand Up Classroom. It is... Thursday, July 23rd, we are brought to you by New Media Comedy and the Comedy Legacy Podcast. And remember people, New Media Comedy is worldwide. Now, I want to talk today about writing the unexpected. 
me talk about what I mean by that. We all get inspired by our bits. We all have an idea and we go, I can't wait to write that. But we should also be able to turn the mundane into funny as well. Not just the things that heavily inspire us, but the things that we just come across. One of the exercises I like to do, and, and I do it almost weekly, is I like to sit down and go, okay, what's the funniest thing that happened yesterday that I didn't decide to write about? And I just think about it and I go, okay, the funniest thing that happened to me yesterday that I, I did not uh, write about was, well, for me in this case, uh, yesterday my whole family was able to leave the house without me even knowing about it. And I was walking around seeing everybody, but suddenly there were four people there, then three people there, then two people there, and then I go outside to talk to people and boom, nobody there. And how self-absorbed am I that I don't even notice a whole family leaving? So I'm going to decide to write about that. It's not something that I thought of instantly and went, I need to make that funny. But what it's going to do is it's going to make me have to look at things and have to focus on things and find a way to make them funny, which is exactly what you want to do. Now, the other thing I want to talk about today is shortening your bids. Everyone writes and everyone does too much. You want to explain everything to your audience and you don't need to explain everything to your audience. You only need them to get the joke. So shorten your bits, go in them, edit them, take out the essential, the, the non-essentials. What I like to do is I like to, to have two highlighters and there's, you know, a, a blue highlighter. And when I, I highlight it in blue, that's what they should be laughing at. And then I have another highlighter, which is a yellow highlighter. And that's everything that's written that you need in order to understand that blue. All right. So the, the, the joke is high, highlight, uh, highlighted in blue. And then the setup is highlighted in yellow. And anything that's not blue or yellow, it's eliminated. Create your own system. Find a way to do it that best suits you. Now, we all get our advice by talking to a lot of comics and we talk to comics every week on the comedy legacy podcast a new episode every monday night premieres 9 p.m on youtube um last week was carol montgomery this week it's sean lynch um who is not only a uh, a fabulous uh comedian but he also uh has written television uh most notably celebrity death match on mtv we talk to him a lot about a lot of different disciplines. So you're going to want to be there for that. Until next time in the stand-up classroom, I'm Jim Andrinos. Keep writing, people. Hello, everybody. This is Jim Andrinos, but I'm pretty sure you know that if you clicked on this video. And uh, this is the stand-up classroom brought to you by New Media Comedy Worldwide and the fine folks at the Comedy Legacy Podcast. Um, and Fridays, Fridays are a little mini lesson. We go a little more in depth into what we talk about. Not just advice, but explanation. And I want to talk today about constantly reworking your material. Now, I'm not talking about rewriting stuff as it gets older. I'm not talking about, you know, just reworking a bit that you wrote two years ago because it's time. I'm talking about systematically going into all of your bits uh, on, on intervals, regular intervals, and constantly improving them, constantly adjusting them, constantly changing them. Um, it does two things. One, it keeps a, a larger number of bits in your head. So when you're performing, you have more of a repertoire to grab from. But two, and this to me is, is the genuine gift of constantly going into your stuff. When you're constantly going into your stuff, when you're constantly looking at all your material, what you're doing is you're bringing fresh eyes and you're bringing interval eyes into your writing. What do I mean by that? Well, if you wrote something when you were incredibly passionate about it, and then suddenly you look at it again when you're not as passionate about it, now you have a little more distanced eye and you might be able to nuance that material a little bit more. And let's just say coming at it from a third angle, new information's come in. So now you're looking at that and you're going, oh, okay, so I thought this, I changed it to this when I had a little bit of distance, but now I've got new information to add to it and possibly bring me in another direction. What you're doing is you're constantly making your bits a breathing, flowing entity, as opposed to stagnant, this is done, let's move on. 
And when you do that, your material always seems fresher. You're always more connected to it as a performer because you're always more passionate about it as, as a performer. Now, that's Friday, July 24th, I'm telling you this, but you could do that any day. You can literally rewrite your stuff every day if you wanted to. Now, that's an insane amount of work and you're probably not gonna do it, but look at a bit for a week or two weeks in a row. Work on a bit for a week or two weeks in a row. See how much small incremental changes can change the overall structure of your comedy. Now, um, there's a lot of great comics that we've interviewed on processes and how they put stuff together and what they like and what they don't like. Uh, and you can, can find them all on the Comedy Legacy Podcast. And uh, we usually try and send you to the YouTube channel because uh, these comics are very familiar faces and you should be able to put a face behind the name. But uh, we would love if you would subscribe to our podcasts, you know, on all the places you get your podcasts uh, and leave a comment because that really helps our ranking and, and uh, we would be so eternally grateful if you did that. Uh, until tomorrow, I'm Jim Andrinos. This is the, you know, the, the stand-up classroom brought to you by the Comedy Legacy Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. Keep on writing. Welcome to stand-up classroom, people. I'm Jim Andrinos. You know that. Uh, and we are brought to you by New Media Comedy Worldwide, as if you didn't know, and the Comedy Legacy Podcast. We here, Saturday, July 25th, I want to talk to you about your language. And no, I'm not going to tell you to keep comedy clean. I can give a fuck if you keep it clean. Your comedy is personal and you should use any words you want. But I am going to say you need to use more words. You need to find more words and bring them into what you're doing. You need to be inspired by words. You need to bring your full depth and breadth of your vocabulary to the audience. And you absolutely need to take a walk through the thesaurus as much as you can. So you're not using the same words all the time. Remember, we've got our physicality and our words to paint mental pictures for the audience. If you're using the same language all the time, your act gets boring. It's not so bad when you're doing five and 10 minutes. If you're just starting out, how much can you really repeat yourself? But it's when you're doing 30, 45, an hour. Maybe you're gonna be so talented that someday you're lucky enough to be like a, a Brian Regan and do theaters and you're doing 90 minute shows. If your language isn't fresh and constantly evolving, if you're not painting new and prettier pictures with each progressive bit, the audience is gonna get bored and the audience is gonna feel that you're lacking something. Um, I also wanna to talk today about touching base with bookers. Yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic. No, there, there's not as many gigs as there should be. Yes, there's a whole lot of comics that are vying for the spots that you usually have, but it's not always gonna be this way. In a couple of months, things will get back to normal and you'll be doing the gigs that you've always done. Keep touching base with the bookers. Make sure that you stay within their consciousness. Yes, right now, they're not very open to working with you. They have the pick of the litter, but you want to keep the relationships alive because eventually they're gonna need you. All right, so uh, we do need to talk about a little bit about past episodes of the Comedy Legacy Podcast which are always available on YouTube and they're always available for download if uh, if you go to wherever you get your podcasts. Watch them all and let us know who you liked and let us know what works for you so we can bring you more people like that. Uh, until, well, until tomorrow, actually. I'm Jim Andrino, this is the Stand Up Classroom. Guys, keep performing. Bye. Hey everybody. Jim and Dreenos, welcome to Stand Up Classroom. It is Sunday, July 26th. We are brought to you by the Comedy Legacy Podcast and the folks at New Media Comedy Worldwide. Uh, and we want to talk today about writing topical material. I know what you're saying. Jim, I don't do topical material. Why should I write it? You should write it because it gets you off your mark. Let's talk about what I mean by getting you off your mark. Um, when we're so planned and so focused on what we write and how we write, 
we don't leave ourselves open to trying new things. When you're writing topical material, in particular, when you're writing jokes that have a very short shelf life, so the onus is on making them quick and, and bringing them to the market quickly, you tend to accelerate your writing process so that when you sit down to write something that you actually care about later on, whether that be something from your childhood or something that just happened at home, you're bringing those skills into it. Um, I tell people all the time, write top old jokes every once in a while, even if you have no intention of doing them, because the practice of writing top old jokes makes you a stronger joke writer because it makes you have to write things that chase the punchline of the moment. Keeps you more connected to the zeitgeist. Uh, I also want to talk to you guys about researching and starting uh, a plan for a new platform. Explain what I mean by that. Again, you want to have all the social media um, covered if you can, from Twitter to Snapchat to you know uh, Twitch and anything in between. Uh, in, in addition to your own website and things of that nature, you want as many points of entry for the audience to find you as they can find you. And every once in a while, we become incredibly comfortable with one or two platforms and we don't really bring in the other ones and what i'm telling you is do the research find the other ones see what's out there play with them because what each of them has is each of them has their own audience the audience that you're going to find on instagram differs from the audience you find on facebook and that definitely differs from the audience you find on twitch and so on and so on and so on and by cultivating each of those individual audiences you bring more and varied people to your brand and ultimately that is what we want more than you guys possibly know so tomorrow we have a brand new comedy legacy podcast that will air 9 p.m eastern time on youtube live uh it is with sean lynch a very funny uh performer and writer uh who is uh, one of the creators of celebrity deathmatch and he's gonna come and talk to us about so many things that I genuinely feel you guys need to hear about. So catch that tomorrow night and catch uh, us, you know, here at the stand-up classroom tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jim Andrina. Bye-bye, everybody. So we hope you really enjoyed that. We hope you got a lot of great lessons out of it. Um, and you can write us. Uh, you write to us at comedylegacy at nmcworldwide.com tell us the guests you would like to see on comedy legacy tell us the subjects you would like us to cover on the stand-up classroom this is your place to get the information that you need uh and it's free and accessible on the web so we'd really appreciate it if you told other comedians as well so that we could spread the word and help as many fellow performers as we can i'm jim Adrenos. we will see you next week on stand-up classroom bye-bye everybody